Uh, for those of you who may not know, I just wanted to, first of all, welcome you, but also give you a small overview about what you're about to see. What you're going to see today is a poetry recitation contest. The 12 contestants that are coming to the stage are grade level champions from both sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So they've won class competitions, they've won grade level competitions, and now they're here before you competing for the title of Inman Poetry Out Loud Champion. Now before we get started, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this process. When I facilitated Poetry Out Loud at Sutton, we had a very special young lady win her sixth grade year. Then she came back and won it her seventh grade year. And then she came back again, and you guessed it, won it her eighth grade year. And the Grand Champions Medal is in her honor. It's called the Gates Medal. Devin Gates is here with us today. Let's welcome her to the stage. Poetry Out Loud has taught me that it, it doesn't matter who you are or what you've accomplished or what mistakes you've made or what you got on your math test. For those two or three minutes that you're in front of this microphone, you're not you anymore. You are a messenger. You are the only thing standing between the words on a page that someone must have written for some reason and the people who were meant to hear it. Love's Philosophy by Percy Bushy Shelley. The fountains mingle with the river, and the rivers with the ocean. The winds of heaven mix forever with a sweet emotion. Nothing in the world is single, all things by a law divine. In one spirit meet and mingle, why not I with thine? See the mountains kiss high heaven, and the waves clasp one another. No sister flower would be forgiven that disdained its brother. And the sunlight clasps the earth, and the moonbeams kiss the sea. What's all the sweet work worth if thou kiss not me? Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul, and sings the tune without the words, and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest lands and on the strangest seas, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. I am the mother of sorrows. I am the ender of grief. I am the bud and the blossom. I am the late falling leaf. I am thy priest and thy poet. I am thy serf and thy king. I cure the tears of the heart sick. When I come near, they shall sing. White on my hands is the snowdrop. Swart are my fingers as clay. Dark is thy frown as the midnight. Fair is my brow as the day. Battle and war are my minions, doing my will as divine. I am the calmer of passions. Peace is a nursling of mine. Speak to me gently or curse me. Seek me or fly from my sight. I am thy thorn in the morning. Thou art my slave in the night. Down to the grave I shall take thee. Out from the noise of the strife. Then shalt thou see me and know me. Death, then no longer, but life. Then shalt thou sing at my coming. Kiss me with passionate breath. Clasp me and smile to have thought me. Aught save the foeman of death. Come to me, brother, when weary. Come when thy lonely heart swells. I'll guide thy footsteps and lead thee down where the dream woman dwells. I 
wandered lonely as a cloud by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. Beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in a sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the waves in sparkling glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Children under, say, 10, shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding, inexorably pushing into the vacuum, galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing, all of it acted out in silence. At 10, we're still learning the rules of cartoon animation, that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. Ten-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound, tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house. Sinking ships have lifeboats. The trucks will come with their ladders. If you jump, you will be saved. A child places her hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across a city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skid, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. Not Taken by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same, and both that morning equally lay and leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I carry your heart with me, I Carry It In, by E.E. E. Cummings. I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I am never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done by only me is your doing, my darling. I fear no fate. For you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world. For beautiful, you are my world, my true. And it's you are whatever a moon has always meant, and whatever a sun will always sing is you. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide 
And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. Thank you. It was not death for I stood up by Emily Dickinson. It was not death for I stood up and all the dead lie down. It was not night for all the bells put out their tongues for noon. It was not frost, for on my flesh I felt Sirocco's crawl, nor fire for just my marble feet could keep a chance of cool. And yet it tasted, like them all, the figures I have seen, set orderly for burial, reminded me of mine, as if my life were shaven and fitted to a frame, and could not breathe without a key, and was like midnight something. When everything that ticked has stopped, and space stares all around, and grisly frost's first autumn morns repeal the beating ground. But most, like chaos, stopless, cool, without a chance or spar, or even a report of land to justify despair. The Man with Night Sweats by Tom Gunn. I wake up cold. I, who prosper through dreams of heat, wake to their residue, sweat, and the clinging sheet. I grew as I explored, the body I could trust, even while I adored the risk that made robust. In each layer to the skin, a wonder. I cannot be but sorry. The given shield was cracked, my mind reduced to hurry, my body reduced and wrecked. I have to change the bed, but I stopped myself instead. Stopped upright where I am, hugging my body to me as if to shield it from the pains that will go through me, as if hands were enough to hold off an avalanche. March 29th, 2010. Every morning since the time changed, I have woken to the dawn chorus, and even before it sounded, I dreamed of it. Loud, unbelievably loud, shameless, raucous. And once I rose and twitched the curtains apart, expecting the birds to be pressing in fright against the pane like passengers. But the garden was empty, and it was night. Not a slither of light at the horizon. Still, the birds were bawling through the midst. Terrible, invisible, a million small evangelists. How they sing, as if each had pecked up a smoldering coal, their throats singed and swollen with song, in dissonance as befits the dark world, where only travelers and the sleepless belong. <laughs> fire some say in ice but from what I've tasted of desire I hold with those who favor life but if it had to perish twice I think I know enough of pain to say that ice is also great and would suffice personal by Tony Hoagland don't take it personal they said but I did I took it all quite personal. The breeze and the river and the color of the fields, the price of grapefruit and stamps, the wet hair of women in the rain. And I cursed what hurt me and I praised what gave me joy. The most simple-minded of possible responses. The government reminded me of my father with his deafness and laws. And the weather reminded me of my mom with her tropical squalls. Enjoy it while you can, they said of happiness. Think first, they said of talk. Get over it, they said at the school of broken hearts. But I couldn't, and I didn't, and I don't believe in the clean break. I believe in the compound fracture served with the sauce of dirty regret. I believe 
and saying it all and taking it all back and saying it all again for good measure while the air fills up with I'm sorry's like wheeling birds and the trees look seasick in the wind. Oh, life, can you blame me for making a scene? You were that yellow caboose, the moon disappearing over a ridge of cloud. I was the dog chained in some fool's backyard, barking and barking, trying to convince everything else to take it personal too. The Layers by Stanley Kunitz. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides from which I struggle not to stray. When I look behind, as I am compelled to look, before I can gather strength to proceed on my journey, I see the milestones dwindling toward the horizon and the slow fires trailing from the abandoned campsite over which scavenger angels wheel on heavy wings. Oh, I have made myself a tribe out of my true affections, and my tribe is scattered. How shall the heart be reconciled to its feast of losses. In a rising wind, the manic dust of my friends, those who fell along the way, bitterly stings my face. Yet I turn, I turn, exulting somewhat with my will intact to go wherever I need to go and every stone on the road precious to me. In my darkest night, when the moon was covered and I roamed through wreckage, a nimbus clouded voice directed me. Live in layers, not on the litter. Though I lack the art to decipher it, no doubt the next chapter in my the book of transformations is already written. I am not done with my changes. So I really want to congratulate all of the contestants uh, because, uh, you know, they've worked really hard and it's really difficult to search yourself and find a piece of art that speaks to you and then have the courage to come out here and present it to not only your peers, but your superiors, your teachers, your parents. And just letting your voice be heard. And in my book, that already makes all of them winners. <laughs> This represents something that I know to all these competitors and to everyone that participated in Poetry Out Loud this year means a lot. Uh, and I just hope that from this experience, all of you in the audience who will be here next year and the year after will consider participating in this 
wonderful event so that you can share our love of words with your peers. Our grand champion at Inman for 2017 is Aaron Taylor.